All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my stream. Uh, actually, let me message my roommate that I'm streaming so that he doesn't barge in here. Uh, all right, so that's done. Uh, so today we are going to continue working on the microblogging platform or the Gemini framework. So as I recap, the Gemini framework, not the Gemini, ah, my bad. The Gemini protocol is basically a very simplified web. Uh, very simplified www so it's basically quite similar to, to gopher if you know that but if not then it's just uh, you can think of it as a simpler http and it is coupled with the gemini text format which is basically markdown uh, but also simplified it doesn't do much tables and formatting uh, but that is out of the scope for today but I recommend checking out uh, there's a link in the description but this is the address for the uh, protocols website you can check that out link is as I said in the description and there's a specification it's really short I really recommend looking into that because I think it's nice it's small uh, and fun. It is still new, people are experimenting with it, it's fun. Uh, and so what we're building is, uh, well, basically a Twitter clone, so a micro-blogging app. Uh, but instead of the regular web, it's on Gemini, with all its limitations and advantages. Uh, so what we did so far is uh, we wrote the Hello World using the Gemini protocol framework for Golang, which is called GIG. And let me guess. Uh, I think it's. Yeah. So it's basically this one by Pitcher on GitHub. Uh, this product, this this framework basically works like any Golang web framework. So you can, you just have functions that are handlers. So it's really nice to use. I enjoy it so far. Uh, and yeah, so we did a hello world with that. Then we figure out how to obtain the client certificate and how to request that because Gemini is mm, by specification. Uh, the clients are required to use TLS, so it's secure, like HTTPS. But moreover, uh, a lot of clients support and servers support uh, client certificates, and the protocol supports that, so you can have client certificates for identification. A lot of clients provide you with a nice uh, user interface for, uh, for providing the user certificates for managing managing your identities so uh, that's a really uh, much nicer way to do this uh, i believe than usernames and passwords uh, but i guess it comes at a cost but we'll talk about that later uh, maybe not even in this stream uh, but yeah we can like the client presents a uh, uh, the, the, the public key and signs the, the communication so we know they have the certificate based on the certificate we can compute we figure out how to read that it's really simple in in gig uh, or jig i don't know uh, you just call the, the context as the certificate function which just returns you the certificate you need uh, and we figure out how to get a fingerprint of that, which is what we'll store in the database to identify the certificates and assign them to users so that we know who is connecting to our website. And 
well, certificates are also needed for sessions to have a session uh, so to keep the user logged in because there is there are no cookies in Gemini. Uh, so uh, the only piece of information we get is what client what the what certificate the client uses and based on that we can just start the entire user session server side uh, which is enough for our app uh, and allows the clients to be less complicated I guess because you don't need to do cookies and not having cookies I assume makes tracking users harder which I mean is a good thing for the user uh, yep, so we figure out how to do the fingerprint, we made a nice function, create fingerprint, which, well, hashes it and converts to a string, because strings are easy to save in files, databases or whatever, where, wherever. Uh, and we figure out how to ask the user for input, because in Gemini you don't have forms, uh, you can only get a pop-up. Uh, asking for a single input line similar to the prompt function in JavaScript if you're into that uh, And I guess that's enough for uh, short messages So we can handle that uh, And yeah, we started working on the regis user registration uh, This this uh, so we, we, we added a root uh, slash register which which starts the registration flow uh, so we only have gotten to first we try to get the certificate that the user of the user and then if there is no certificate we ask for it by returning an error uh, with a correct status code which makes the client it lets the client know that a user certificate is required and provides the user with UI to choose one or create one usually. Uh, and then we, we, well first we check if there is some input from the user. If there is none, we return a um, status message, a message with a status code of input, which is, which basically makes the client uh, prompt for some input with the, the question you provide and then once the user enters that input it re-requests the, the same route but with the input in the query string so it's just after the question mark so yeah we get the query, st query string here if it's, if, if, if it's not there or it's empty and uh, well, it just re we re request it again or for the first time. And if right now, if there is, uh, if the if the query string is not empty, we just show. Uh, we just well tell the user their nickname again. So yes, and we hopefully today finish this registration flow. So. Yeah, we gotta add username validation to ensure there's no funny characters in there or something that could break our 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 stuff. I mean, I guess if we do it properly, there's no harm in having weird characters. But I guess stuff like emojis could make it so that the so that other users, I mean, so that you can't log in because on different operating systems or depending on your configurations, the same characters can be represented as different, as different Unicode, uh, I mean, as different bytes. So we don't want that, we don't want that. And probably to keep it simple, we're just gonna, for now, restrict it to the Latin alphabet and numbers which I am aware is not a good thing to do because people from all over the world can use computers and that's kind of discriminatory uh, but I mean it's simple for now and we also we will also have display names uh, oh yeah and also the usernames I want them to have be a part of URLs and using Unicode there is also asking for trouble uh, 
uh, yeah, and we're gonna have display names so the user can choose uh, some more uh, fun names or just their actual names if they're from a country which isn't using the Latin alphabet and that's a lot of people so we want to make sure that they can use it just fine all right uh, yeah and then once we uh, figure out once we like validate the username then store the fingerprint Create the user in the database, then store their fingerprint, fingerprint of the certificate. Uh, then, after testing that, we can implement... Uh, forbid, we can make it impossible for the user to register twice with the same certificate, because then how would we differentiate between those accounts? Yeah, and maybe if we can figure that out enough, we're gonna start Stop tackling the cross-site request forgery problem. Uh, so once that, basically, because in Gemini you don't have uh, post requests, you don't have uh, referer header headers. Uh, basically, as you can see here, the actually let me show you. It's it's better to see stuff, I guess. And just hear me talking. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, the, how the input works. Uh, observe. I'm gonna open the register root, which is registered here in the framework. And so, of course, uh, what it does, it checks the question. If there's no input, it asks for input. So observe. Yep. There's a pop-up. And if we enter something, uh, then, and send it, notice in the URL it's just added to the URL after the question mark. So, this means that this URL is equivalent to having for the user input something. And other websites, what they, I mean, it's, I guess that's, they're not websites other Gemini capsules, I think they call it, can just redirect you to something like, I don't know, and then suddenly you get registered with your client certificate and you didn't want to do that, but someone just redirected you. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to avoid that. Uh, I have some ideas in mind, but one thing at a time, I guess, but probably we're not gonna do it today. So yeah, so today we are going to finish registration, hopefully, and yeah, so let's start doing that. Uh, all right. Uh, so yeah, let me close this one. Actually, I'm going to save it. Uh, yep. So. Here is the, the code. Everything is in one file for now, because we're just figuring out how to do stuff. And yeah, so, so I guess we're gonna be start by verifying the username. And actually, because I basically want to confirm that it's just the Latin alphabet and numbers. Uh, so in Python, uh, the I think it's string has nice, uh, yeah, and nice uh, variables containing all the letters and all the numbers. Mm. Digits, yeah, digits. Ah, just digits, yeah, I guess. All right, uh, and you can just check each character is with, with like, like this. I'm not sure whether there's something like that in Golang, but I'm gonna find out. And if not, we're just gonna check the ASCII codes with greater than and less than. So okay. Uh, let's 
Launch the streaming profile, because I don't want any notifications popping up. Uh, yeah, so we're looking for... Oh, let's just... Let's just try that. Uh... Let's see if there's... because I know how to do it like that, of course, because ASCII and then the, the characters are just numbers, but uh, I wanted to see if we can have something more idiomatic. Actually, I'm gonna check something really quick. Idiomatic. Idiomatic, okay, so... We want to do this idiomatically. Yeah, and I guess this is a nice way. Yeah, so I like this way because... I mean... I'm sure most of the programmers will figure this out, but here it's nice and explicit. Uh, which characters are allowed and which are not. So yeah, so oh, let's make a function for this. First, let's let's define the letters. No, I guess I'm gonna put it in the function because mm, actually, let's just do a whole function for excuse me for validating usernames. And yeah, so let's have this here. Hopefully the compiler is gonna optimize this, but if not, it shouldn't matter that much. Because it should still be quite fast, but yeah, I mean it's const. I'm sure it's gonna optimize it. And actually let's just... Why waste time? Let's just get string digits plus... ASCII, ASCII lowercase, and maybe ASCII uppercase, there we go, and also we want underscore, I guess, unless I'm gonna check, I don't know, yeah. I guess I wanna see... Yeah, basically, yeah, so... As evidenced by this stream, I came up with this idea of having Latin characters and the underscore without checking. Uh, so, yeah, and then I guess... Actually, I didn't need to close it. Uh, how do I... whatever. Um, yeah, and just let's like iterate over all the characters in the, the username. Ah, wrench, of course. Mm, and, and yeah, let's just check if it's string contains, I think, contains any. Yeah, contains any, and first is the string, then the character, so username. Well, no, uh, what I'm doing. Uh, I'm supposed to check the opposite, so string contains... Yeah, so if the string containing all the allowed characters contains the 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 character that belongs to the username then it's fine but if it doesn't we're gonna have to return an error so let's actually define an error here and i don't know 
your username can only contain alphanumeric characters, underscores, and numbers. And let's return that. And otherwise we do nothing. On the end, at the end, if the, the, the username was validated successfully, we just return nil. And let's have it. Let's have a minimum length. Maybe let's, uh, let's just check if it's not empty. I know we're checking it uh, in in here because it also checks. I mean, it's sometimes could happen that the trailing question mark is there even when the user hasn't done it intentionally, like entered an empty nickname. But still, uh, I'd rather be explicit in here than have by accident somehow later allow the users to register register with an empty username because that wouldn't be that good yeah and just like maybe the username can it yeah, in case it happens somehow uh, all right, so So that's all nice And actually Yes, okay, uh, look here so from validate username which is supposed to well You'll never guess validate the username that the user provides uh, we're checking whether the username is empty and whether it has any uh, characters that are not allowed and then we return an error message based on that so what we can do here is if we allow because here uh, when the user submits something uh, we check if it's empty and if it's empty, we just assume the user hasn't submitted anything. Uh, but actually, I guess usually when the user enters the website, there's just gonna be... Uh, I am assuming this query string method, if there is no query string at all, and instead of an empty one, it just returns the error. So we can catch that and just return this as the basic message for the input but in case there is no error so there is some kind of query string but it is empty instead of handling this here and returning the uh, the, the, the basic message here uh, so like uh, if, if the user just enters and presses send it just gets him to the same yeah let's see just stops. Uh, I hope I didn't... Okay, yeah. I guess this client has some kind of protection for repeated... Uh, against repeated pop-ups. Uh, but yeah, uh, they... Yeah, they get the same pop-up and it's not very helpful. So I believe uh, we should instead show them a different a uh, different message, like, exa like uh, for example, the username cannot be empty. And we're gonna have to do that anyways, so to display this error. So I guess we can just get rid of this part, this verification you see here. And let's check, let's rerun this. Uh, without selector one. Oh yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. And let's see if my hunch is true. Okay. Turns out we cannot do that. We wanted to be smart. 
Turns out we can't. So, I don't think we can distinguish between an empty uh, query string, so with the with the sign, and without uh, no query string. Yeah, because the path is the same. Yeah, so I guess we can't have nice things. So yeah, we're gonna keep this check in. And yeah, all right. Later, if we do some AP, some kind of API or something, it's still good to have this validation in place. So if we're gonna use a different protocol, so as of right now, we can't do that. But yeah, okay, let's, let's still. So we're gonna have to validate the username, the user provided. So actually, let's call this variable username. Uh, let's get rid of this. We don't need this anymore because we know it works and yeah. And let's do this. So we're checking if the username is valid. If the username is not valid, we're gonna return an error. Or actually, wait, that's an... Yeah, so we're just gonna do error. Uh, If R is not nil, uh, we just, yeah, we're gonna show this error to the user. And actually, so we want to get, I think it's gig. Yep, so how do we do this? We need an error and message. So yeah, of course, I don't know about the status code, so let's leave that for now. We're gonna check in the docs very soon. Uh, in the specification of Gemini, because I am not sure which error uh, response code to use. But yeah, as the message for the user, because like the computer only cares about this number, uh, the user gets to see this message. So let's actually open up the the Gemini specification over Gemini, because why not? Uh, it's not the and this is not this is not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. Oh, I can zoom. Nice. So it's be it will be easier to see on the stream. Yeah. And let's look at the documentation and protocol specification. And response body. Oh yeah, this is the response codes. So we have temporary failure. So this is what I want. Okay. So this is just this. There is no more specification for the error specific errors. Okay, there is. Great. This is not it. This is not it. Yep, so none of these errors is suitable for having an incorrect input but actually I'm assuming the permanent failure is more applicable here because uh, yeah bad request or something like that mm, because I mean if the user keeps sub resubmitting the same request with the same username it's not gonna change anything so that is a permanent failure uh, Gone, proxy request failed, bad request. So I guess it's either gonna be bad request or just 50 without anything else. So let's just check to be sure in the documentation what is the definition of permanent failure to see if it's applicable for here. The request failed. Yeah, there is no response body, okay. The nature of the failure is permanent. Uh, so the identical future request will fail for the same reason. And yeah, that is that is basically exactly what we need. Uh, so yeah, let's do status. I mean, no, dig, dig. I'm gonna just use random pronunciation. Permanent failure. 
Yep. So let's try doing something invalid. Like, for example, I got a recompile. And of course, Q is not defined. Because I changed it to username. Uh, where else? Line 90. And recompile. Yep. Actually, run it. Running. And let's. For example, write some Polish name in it, so... Grzegorz Brzęczyszczykiewicz. Which is a name that sounds perfectly fine to a Polish person. And that's not what we wanted. We don't want Polish people on our website. It's okay to say that I am Polish. Just kidding. I don't like some Polish people, not all of them. Well, okay, so for some reason this doesn't return an error. I have no idea why, but let's log it. When in doubt, doubt at logging. Is this this little letter here, this E with an with a tail, should make it angry. Oh yeah, I forget the. Let's try again. Why is this not being called? Oh yeah, I know. Okay, this is this is interesting. Oh, of course. For some reason, during like I had that happen to me twice during the last stream. I am doing the the comparisons incorrectly, and yet still this should return empty username, so the error would not be nil. Yeah, and that I did right. Error is error. Yeah, let's try again. Yeah, so the error is there. Okay, is it is it caching it or something? Let's try a different... No, it's not caching it. Mm. Ow! You know, I'm stupid. I'm not stupid, I'm okay. Of course, I'm not returning this, so it just creates the error and not doing anything with it. Yeah. Alright. Uh, let's try again with Grzegorz Brentyszczykiewicz. That's not really what I like. I would like the user to... I mean, I know the browser, the, the, the client, the Gemini client is supposed to show the user the error message, but as we can clearly see, it does not. So I guess I'm gonna do something else here and instead return a nice page That tells the user about the error. Now let's try that. Yep. And also, let's have a new line. And how does that work? Or do I have to? I, mean, I know. If I do this, I can have an actual new line. Um, yeah, that's kind of cleaner. No? Okay, uh... Yeah, alright. Uh, so, let's tell the user, let's add a link. Yeah, and this is how you do links in Gemini. You just start the line with the arrow and then 
put the link after it. It can be relative, it can be absolute or whatever. It can link to other websites. Yeah, let's recompile. Yeah, we have a link. And no idea what's that, but that's added by the browser. I, I assume it's the last visit or something. Uh, and another thing you can do is have a try again. Try again page. Uh, if you add a space and then something, then it's, it changes the text of the link. Yep. Yeah, and I guess that's nice. So the user knows what happened. We can show in the error. Yeah, later we're gonna do all that in templates, but I mean, one thing at a time. Yeah, so I guess we can handle the usernames for getting the username from the from the, the username from the user. I guess it would be the time to uh, commit this stuff because we did quite a lot. Mm. Not the, the, the database. And let's actually add the database to the git ignore file. We don't want to commit that either. Uh, and yeah, let's do let's do some nice, meaningful commit message. Mm. Registration flow. Uh, request and validate the username. A little bit too long. So let's do that. Uh, response. Upon receiving the username, validate that it is not empty and only contains and contains only the allowed characters otherwise reply with an error page yep perfect and i guess i could push it i didn't set it up on my make it yet so i'm gonna do that in a while and like, I'm gonna add the link in the description to the repository so you can follow it in there, the, the, the adventure. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Let's go back to the code. We did, uh, let's skip it, whatever. Mm. Yeah, so we have the validation done. So if we are here, we can proceed with the if the code has if the code has reached this line, we can proceed with the registration process because we know the username is valid. We're also gonna have to check uh, check if the user has an account, but that's gonna be right here. Yes, if the user has an account, we don't even want to ask him for the username, so we're gonna do it early. But if we're here, then the user, we assume they don't have any account yet, at least with that certificate. I, I don't care if the user wants to have multiple accounts. That's, I mean, I myself have like three accounts on Twitter or different. Oh, hi Kuba. I don't know when you joined. Ben. That's my roommate in the chat. You're watching? No, you get bored. Okay, so I didn't notice. I'm gonna send him a message. Mm. 
yeah. Uh, all right, uh, I'm back. Uh, yeah, so what we're doing, we, we can now, so now what we know right now is that the user doesn't have an account. We actually Yeah, so at this point in the code we know that the user doesn't have an account because we're gonna check that here. And we know they have a valid they provided a valid username because we check this here. They have a certificate. So we know they they have the certificate because we check it here. So we have everything we need to register the user. So let's create the structure that will contain the user. And yeah, let's quickly see what stuff we need. We need a handle, which is the username. And yeah, let's, so we're gonna leave those empty for now. And we're gonna add the certificate here already so we have the handle let's see yeah handle is 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 what wait now that's a string of course yeah, it's just gonna be the username let's set the display name to the username for now we're gonna add some some way to change it later uh, and and yeah the certificates I am assuming that the Go ORM uh, library we're using is gonna create the object in this that we specify in here and automatically set the user ID to have the relation done. Uh, but we're just gonna test that in a minute. So yeah, the certificate has what? What kind of fields does it have? Uh, it has the fingerprint field and the rest is just the binding, right? Yeah, the user ID and the binding. This is, I'm assuming this is going to be set by the ORM when adding to the database because we are using this array already, so we're going to infer that. Yeah, and the fingerprint, yeah, so we can uncomment this because of course we had to comment it because Golang does not allow unused variables and let's see what's wrong oh this is what I did wrong uh, or not let's go back ah wait hang on hang on. oh yeah you see we need a certificate this is not a certificate this is an array of array of certificates And I have an error in the code somewhere because it does not want to... Oh yeah, of course, a comma here. Because, yeah, I'm assuming the error is somewhere because... Because it doesn't format the code if it's incorrect. And save. Yeah, so we have the user and now let me get a quick refresher on GoRM. Uh, Let's see, create, yeah, simple, as simple as that. Actually, wait, db, create, let's pass the pointer, and I think you can check the error by doing this. And yeah, and I'm, now I'm honestly not sure what to do. Because we can return the error to the user as a regular page with the success status, but I guess that would not be uh, really in compliance with the specification. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, it's not a little I forgot to see. Yeah, the chat. Because uh, I'm just assuming nobody is watching. Uh, so uh, Jacob is asking if there's a flag in Golang that allows you to use uh, unused variables. And honestly, I just 
I have no idea because you just shouldn't use uh, unused variables. I mean, that's right in the name. If they're unused, don't use them. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can just comment code or use it. I mean, you don't create usernames without anything. I, I don't think it is like that much. I mean, usually you're creating the... Uh, like, uh, Jacob says that it's helpful for development. I don't think it is that helpful because usually when you're creating a variable you want to use it. And if you don't want to use it, then maybe don't create it yet. I don't know. I mean, I guess... I am assuming you can disable... I mean, it is an error. This, what I'm assuming is that probably if there's an, a, a way to allow compiling with unused variables, some god is gonna use it for production and not for development. And I guess we don't want that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's create the user. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have to see... Yeah, so what I was talking about with this error uh, before... Uh, so if we get an error from the database, we can either return it uh, as an actual error, so with like a status code set to some error status code, or we can return it as like a success, uh, with a success uh, response code which would allow us to say something to the user, because theoretically, if we return an error with this message, the client is supposed to show that message to the user, but as we have noticed, it doesn't. I mean, at least this one doesn't. And we... I, uh, I guess we can work around that and it will work in every client. And I think I am actually going to do that. Like, um, yeah, let's let's have this. I'm gonna copy this because later we're gonna have we're gonna have some helper functions for that. But that's when we're gonna write the templating system. So for now, it doesn't matter because this code is going away. And let's yeah, we show the error. We probably don't want to show this error, to be honest, but for now, for development, it's fine. And let's do... Yep. So let's recompile, okay. And let's try to register. Uh, Okay, and now let's try to see it for ourselves. You know, always be skeptical. So yeah, we have the certificate here. We have the user with the ID 1 and the certificate which is bound to this user with this fingerprint. So now, the next step would be to uh, prevent the user for registering when they already have an account. But we probably will want to check whether the user has account more than once, because we're gonna need this for every 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 part of this application, so we're gonna make another method, actually a function. Yeah. Uh, find user Yeah, so let's have a way to find the user by the by the certificate. And let's get the database here. When we'll be restructuring this app to have multiple files, we're prob probably gonna have a structure with all the app stuff. And we're gonna have like uh, fields that contain the database, for example, so we're not gonna have to pass it everywhere, but for now 
that we'll have to do for the sake of simplicity. And yeah, so I think it we can have first, which is what we want. Uh, mm, we're gonna yeah so we're gonna first create this certificate with the fingerprint actually oh the music cut off oh it's back okay uh we want to yeah let's actually change this into the certificate because it's gonna be easier for to use because you're not gonna have to worry about creating the certificate the fingerprint manually it's gonna be handled for you so basically what go rm uh, does when requesting from the database if i remember correct correctly uh, it basically takes all, all, all the fields in the structure you pass to it uh, that are non-zero so I am skipping the user ID and just providing the fingerprint so it's gonna use just that to search for it in the database and let's create fingerprint from the certificate and then if I am correct I can just do this and yeah I think it's like you can also have additional uh, objects that specify the conditions but I think if you just do this it's gonna use this as the as the conditions but we're gonna see uh, and actually let's do some let's enable some logging to see the request request it's it makes uh, Yeah, I guess I could. Um, I wonder if I can just do this. But I just want. Enable the debug mode for everything. Uh, yeah, and find and find user. And yeah, so it starts the certificate in in this variable because it's a pointer, and then uh, I believe there was uh, some kind of way to check if it's not found. Mm. Yeah, okay, so it's just this. Yeah, so let's start the error. If R equals R not found, I mean, yeah, let's, we're gonna wrap this error or something to 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 have our own errors. But for now, we're just gonna do it like this. So actually. I'm just gonna return any error and because we probably want to handle the not found uh, somehow different we probably want to return a response code that makes sense for uh, not finding the user mm, otherwise we should have the user ID so we can find the user and I guess we have this has many so there's probably some helper function to get the owner owner uh, go loading constraints it's for sure I can just get this ID and use it to find the find the user but I guess we're using a library, so why not see what it has to offer? Returning the first object. Mm -hmm -hmm. With primary key. 
Yeah, I mean, returning with for the getting it with the primary key is simple enough. So let's do u for user and db first u and user id. Yeah, and of course, and let's do the error handling exactly the same way for now. Uh, why nil? Ah, of course, just cannot return nil if it's just a struct, so we have to make it a pointer. Mm, yeah, so now we have the user, because there was no errors, we can return it. Yeah, so we have the find user function, and now we can... So first, to test the function, we're gonna do the following which is try to find the user let's pass the database and the certificate we found mm, yeah. and it's the reference it uh, and now if we Let's get, so by default we're gonna show we're gonna say hello to the unregistered user by default but oh yeah we actually do yeah unregistered I'll do. yeah so we say it's uh, let's go yeah so we say if there's no certificate we say hello to the certificate list user if they have a certificate but they aren't res registered, we're gonna say hello to the unregistered user, which is what they are. And honestly, I have no idea what are they doing with their life if they are not on registered on our website. Probably better stuff than me. Uh, so let's for now do it like this. Oh yeah, so yeah, so let's check if the error is nil. It's not nil. So if there is an error and it is not just the record that found, so if this happens for an and this is false for an unregistered user. So if everything worked fine but the user is not registered, we we don't throw an error. But if the user is not Oh god, I got it. So first, yeah. So if there is no error, let's start with the easy thing first. If there is no error, we set the username here that we're gonna display as a test to the user's display name. If the error is not nil, so in the else block here, and if the error is not record at found, we have an actual database error, so a connection failure or something like that. And we can return new error. And we're gonna do we're gonna do it with the temporary failure. Uh, so it's 4x. Uh, let's find the definition of the 4x. Server and available. I'm assuming there should be. Ah, oh, wait, of course, because I'm using HTTP instead of gig. Temporary failure. If, let's say database error. I mean, honestly, we don't want to show the database errors to the user because they might leak some secret, top secret information. So, hello name. Your fingerprint is this. Yeah, so if it works, we recompile. It doesn't. Uh huh. A user. There we go. The garbage collector in Golang is 
is doing reference counting so we can return to the pointer. It's not gonna get collected or removed from scope before anything. I mean honestly I don't know if it's doing reference counting but I know we can return stuff that are that is declared here and it doesn't get declared on the stack if we if we return it instead it's probably on the hip and we can and it works uh, yeah so it says hello Gzegish which is great because that's the name that we used let's create a new identity not Gzegish oh yeah so let's have it valid until this random year uh, let's switch to this Reload. Why am I still Gzegish? This is not... This is not right. Hmm. Gzegish. Gzegish, Gzegish. Yeah, so, yeah, that sure does work. Okay, uh, I have absolutely no idea why did that happen. But, I mean, it's, 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 it's probably some caching issue. Because it's not really possible. Okay. Because this browser, even it looks, it's nice and looks nice, it has some issues. Uh, oh wait, no, it's certificate plus. Let's do not Grzegorz and see if we still have that bug. Yeah, we do. Okay, never mind. Let's see. So it requests the user with the ID 1. Oh, I'm using first instead of find. And there we go. Good thing I didn't ignore this error, I was about to. Yes, for some reason, yeah, alright. Mm, I didn't save it. I hope it's what it is. Okay, so, wait, hang on. Why is this always one? This. Just hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, it's supposed to be first. I did it right. Oh, I'm sorry again. Uh, we do. So yeah, let's lock the fingerprint itself, or actually, let's just do a first seven characters or something like that. Uh, let's lock the user ID after, and let's do it also before, to see if it said something. And let's see the error, because, you know, it should return an error for the other certificate. I mean, as you can see, uh, the, the certificate fingerprint, which we're using to find the user, is definitely different. I have no idea what just happened to my terminal. Mm. Okay. Uh, my video card is broken, or what? Uh, let's do it again. Uh, sure. Yeah, so... First, we try with Grzegorz. Alright, this is wrong. This is incorrect. So... I was wrong. 
And I guess that's that's to be expected. I uh, often are. Well, let's use this uh, struct as the conditions and see if that does what I thought it will. Yeah, exactly. So you can use it, uh, use this struct as uh, the condition for uh, for the query, but you need to have it in the conditions field. Like if you look at the even the names, it's destination and conditions. I just assumed if this is empty, it's gonna it's gonna use this one as the condition. But as you can see here, honestly, it doesn't do anything if the Conditions is not it's empty. So let's go back with that fix. We can restart and okay with nothing. Certificate this. This is Grzegorz. This is not Grzegorz. And if we register the not Grzegorz, and we cannot do that because there's a space, but we can do not Grzegorz. And not Grzegorz is registered. So let's try going to the root. And there we go. Switch. There we go. Perfect. And what does that mean? We get to commit this stuff because. Yeah, let's do main. Uh, this, by the way, is uh, lazy git, which is a nice Golang tool. For, for committing stuff. Yeah, so you can just have a dashboard for Golang. So, I mean, for Git. Uh, check this out. If you just type lazy Git, it, it, you will find this. Uh, yeah, so let's do main. Let's commit it. And yeah, is it? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's fine. Oh yeah, and we also... Okay, you know what? We shouldn't have done this probably. We should have committed earlier. Because we did the creation. Yeah, so let's finish this validation. Because mm. yeah, we implemented this function. Because we implemented the username validation. And user creation in the database, we should have committed it, uh, but we forgot. I mean, I forgot. Uh, and and started writing this function for for finding the user. So I mean, let's just finish it and commit afterwards. And I guess we're streaming for an over an hour now, so this will be the last thing I'll do today. So we are here. We are here. We have to check if the user has an account. Actually, we don't need the fingerprint for that anymore. So I'm gonna move the fingerprint creation here. Mm -hmm. Splendid. And here we we're gonna do the check. Mm. Yeah, find user db cert if r is not nil and r is not garm record not found yeah we're gonna have to replace it with our own our own error because I mean, I don't want to be tied to any library, so I guess I will be tied to this, but yeah, just for the sake of cleanness, so we can eventually maybe replace this library easier if we need to. Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, so if we get any generic database error, we can return. Uh, we have this one here. I'm gonna do that again. Again, I'm gonna abstract this somehow, these errors and stuff. 
Mm. Yeah, so we turn the error. And if the error is not. Yeah, so at this point, we know that error is either nil or record not found. If it's nil, then it means that it has successfully found the user, and we cannot allow that. So we're gonna do. Actually, we didn't need that. We're gonna tell the user what happened. You already have an account with this certificate. Try again with a different one. Later, we're gonna provide the user with the possibility to like unregister the account, I'm assuming. Uh, but not yet. Yeah, so we return, so this should be... You cannot reach this part uh, if you have an account, like uh, after this part. Yeah, and if the error is recorded that found, that's the only possibility left. Because these two gave all of the possibilities. Uh, then, then it's great. We can have... We can have an account. So let's try. So yeah, let's see. Uh, I mean, I, uh, yeah. Mm, and I want to switch those two. I like to have my windows ordered nicely. So I want this one below this one, and this one to the right. Ah, oh, fuck. Whatever. Yes, yeah, so Grzegorz. Not Grzegorz, yeah, okay. This is not Grzegorz. Let's try to register again while being not Grzegorz. It does not work because we haven't recompiled. Uh, what's the error? You is declared. Ah, oh, of course, because we don't care about the user. We just. I mean, we do care about the user, obviously. We, we're making a great app, but not in this particular moment. We just want to know if the user exists. Let's try again. We are Grzegorz. We are not Grzegorz. Wait. Okay. Uh, this also... Uh, yeah, something is... Something broke in the browser I am as you see it says that I'm using both certificates at the same time that's not really possible I'm just gonna start it up again not really a production grade software yeah let's stop using this everywhere stop using this everywhere Okay, the sweet stuff. Okay, you know what? This, this... This browser is bro broken. Uh, I mean, it's all beta software. Mm, I'm assuming if I clear... Clear it, uh, it's config. I can just do this, and oh, of course, uh, I'm not running the server, so that's why it didn't work, of course. Yeah, so we are a certificate less user. Let's create a uh, Grzesiu. Uh. Create the identity. Now we are, let's use it. We have a... Uh, right? Let's register. I am registered. 
let's go back to the main site to verify it. It says hello, Jeshu. So that's us. And let's try to register again. Ah, of course. Wonderful. That's exactly what we wanted. So yeah, what we achieved today is we have finished almost uh, doing the register route. So users can register onto our website. And we have a way to find the user based on the certificate they present. And we can check before registering the user whether they already have an account because we don't want them registering twice. So yeah, I guess that's gonna be it for today. And let's see what else we have here. Uh, so basically we did that. We did that, finished the registration flow, almost. And yeah, so exactly as planned in one hour, 20 minutes. I guess it's a little bit on the long side, but fine. Yeah, so the cross-site request forgery problem. I'm assuming it's gonna be a whole stream out of it. Because right now, I'm gonna show you. Let's assume the user has a link on their website. That's like uh, Gemini. It's like we are. On, I don't know. I'm bad. I'm evil. Okay. Let someone wants to trick us into saying to the world that we are evil. They put a link on their site, but they also say it's something like click here for it is. And you click that and it redirects you to to, to, to this link. And we you don't know that because I guess you didn't check before clicking. But we can't expect the user to just check every link meticulously before clicking. And then my, they might not even know that it's... Uh, I mean, they could just get redirected to it. It's really out of the user's control. So once they do that, they get... Uh, ah, of course, the, the question mark. They get registered to... They well, they get the, our website gets open. And as you can see, here we already have an account. But if they didn't, and their client provided the server with a certificate, they would get an account, and they wouldn't even know it. So we probably want to avoid that. Like, with registering it's one thing, but the same way tweeting is gonna work... I mean, not tweeting. That's probably a trademark. I didn't mean to use that. Uh, but it's probably gonna work the same way with... with liking stuff, posting stuff. And we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna allow people to... To do that without the content of the user, so we're gonna have to figure out a solution that works uh, works well and is easy to use for me for development because I mean it, pretty much everything on the site is gonna need to be protected like that. So yeah, that's gonna be the topic of the next stream. And um, so thank you for watching. Uh, this is uh, actually oh I committed it. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm gonna comment it later, and thank you for watching. Bye.